welcome back to the channel welcome if you're new here my name is Dee I make lifestyle content on my everyday life and I also do reviews on black and brown owned businesses so if that's something that you like make sure that you like the video make sure that you like the video subscribe if you love the channel and if you like what I'm about and click the notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video so as you guys can see your girl's got a new cut and I'm rocking it. I feel hella cute. I would have already kind of told you guys all about everything and you would have seen some clips. I look so freaking cute. I need to get back on my fitness stuff because all I've been doing is eating and eating and eating and eating. So I need to get back onto my fitness stuff, all that. Cause I know, I've been gaining weight, honey. I've been gaining weight. No, I'm not pregnant. No, there ain't no kids up in this stomach of mine or whatever. The only baby that's in there is a food baby. But I had washed my hair last night. Let me tell you, I knew I made the right decision when it took me two seconds to wash and condition my hair. It is so freeing to not spend all day in the freaking shower dealing with your hair detangling, ripping out all of that freaking dead hair and whatnot. Uh, jeez, it is so it is so freeing <laughs> to just be able to go zh, 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 actually get to the scalp zh, 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 and then just be done. You don't have a bunch of water dripping down your neck. You can literally just use a towel, just blah, blah, blah. And your hair is, you know, not dripping. Obviously, it's still wet, but it's not dripping and all of that. But anyways, I'm going to keep on going on with my day and I will check in with you guys later. Ooh, hello, folks. I don't know how this is going to be. Hopefully this thing doesn't fall down. And sorry if it's a little dark, cause yeah. <laughs> I'm still kind of playing around with different camera settings and stuff, so. But anyways, there are two things that I wanted to talk about while we were in the car, cause I'm actually about to go to Fiesta to pick up some catfish nuggets, because I think I told you earlier today that I am making, or this week, I'm going to be making a sort of like catfish sort of stew situation. So the first thing that I wanted to talk to you about is I was on, I was scrolling TikTok earlier this morning. Lord, I hope this doesn't fall. Okay. I think, I think we might be okay. But I was scrolling through TikTok <laughs> earlier this morning and tell me why there is a documentary about Miss Cleo coming out this month. I don't, I didn't get the exact date for it or maybe it was YouTube, it doesn't matter. But there is a, there's a documentary coming out talking about Miss Cleo. And I am so, I'm so watching it because if you're, if you're anybody who, you know, grew up in the 90s, I think she was primarily in the 90s, then you clearly know who Miss Cleo was. And if you don't, Miss Cleo was this African-American woman from LA who came up with this character called Miss Cleo, who was apparently a psychic. So, you know, you would call in, maybe give her a little bit of information. And then from there, you know, she would do her kind of psychic readings. This documentary, I think kind of goes into the details of, you know, the woman behind Miss Cleo, the whole operation, the fraud, everything. So as a 90s kid, I am so stoked to be checking this out. <laughs> oh my gosh. And you would hear it, like her tagline was calling me now. And the thing is she had like this Jamaican accent. You know, people thought this woman was from the Caribbean. You know, all this BS. Come to find out she's just a black lady from LA who probably had some stuff going on and created this character. But it kind of sucks though for the people who, you know, truly believed in her craft and, you know, paid their money and, and thought that she was, you know, helping them on a spiritual sense. So I thought it was so funny um, and so interesting that they are, that they made a documentary about this and you know, that it's coming out this month. It might already be out as far as I know. Uh, I'm not sure, but I will look that up when I get back home. But the second thing I wanted to kind of chat to you guys about is, so my boo and I have been very interested to know what kind of our African ancestry is, right? Where our people come from, all of that. And I think many people know that as black Americans, we come from all over the continent, right? Talking about Africa. And we have no idea where our roots come from. You know, 
that whole kind of slavery thing was intentional, right? Like splitting people up, making sure that families weren't together, all that kind of stuff. So we really have no clue where we come from and we had to, you know, and there are experts that have kind of come onto the scene to kind of help uh, mitigate that, I guess, if that's the right words to use. So there's this company called African Ancestry and their website is AfricanAncestry.com that specializes in tracing the roots back of specific African tribes based on your DNA. Now we have sites like, or companies like 23andMe, we have um, just like the overall kind of ancestry company that everyone's really familiar with where they kind of do your overall DNA and kind of ancestry. So if you're a black person, especially in the States, you probably have some like European blood kind of flowing through you because of slavery. And so it's just really interesting to even from that perspective see, you know, what your what your DNA kind of um, pans out. But with African ancestry, as I said earlier, it specializes in African ancestry. So trying to tie you back to a very specific African tribe, colony, whatever you want to call it. So my boo did his, and I will tell you what his is um, because I'll allow, I'll let him kind of do that because you know that's like his story. So basically, with African ancestry, they have two tests that you can take. Um, they have a maternal side that they test, and then they have the paternal side because it's very possible that the maternal and the paternal are completely different, which I feel like in most cases they are. So the only, but here's a caveat to that: only men can do the maternal and paternal. He did both maternal and paternal. The tribes that they traced his DNA back to are not of the same tribe, not of the same country, which is really interesting. So like I said, I'll let him kind of share in his videos what that you know DNA makeup is. So then for my birthday, I believe, or maybe for Christmas, I don't know, but he, he bought me a kit. So like he, okay, so here's what happened. Hold on, speak of the devil. He bought himself the, uh, I think he had bought himself the paternal one. And then for his birthday, I bought him the maternal test. And then for my birthday, he bought the maternal test since that's the only one that I can take at this point. If I want to know the paternal, then I'm going to have to have my brother take the test. But yeah, so I took the test a couple months back I think before we left for South Africa I had sent in my DNA and they had processed the results and got them to me like several weeks ago tell me why these people have traced my DNA back to like a Middle Eastern woman a Middle Eastern woman okay like I was so shocked to read that because you know my booze was very very clear right where it where his mom and and dad's kind of lines came from right like one like his mom came from one tribe in one African country and his dad came from another tribe in another African country and I thought that that was really interesting for him but then it was even crazier to get my results and see that oh you know you're basically tied to a Middle Eastern woman and so I'll when we get back to the house I will read the actual results like on my email or actually I might be able to do it while we're in the car like once I park uh, before we go into the grocery store I will uh, read the results because it's like really quick all right so let's pull this up here I've also got my retainers in so just bear with me as I'm trying to like <laughs> read I'm not going to show you the letter because it's got my address and like some identifying information in it so we don't want that they test out different variants I guess those are like the DNA bits that they test and so I'll just kind of read it really quickly so it says dear Denise it is with great la, 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 la. dear Denise it is with great pleasure that I report the result of your matrix clan TM test so that's the matrix clan there's like matrix clan and then patrix clan so matrix clan is for the maternal and then patrix clan is for the paternal uh, we have just determined that the ancestry of your maternal lineage is Middle Eastern what does this mean we compared parts of your maternally inherited DNA from people around the world to look for matches. In your case, we found identical 100% matches with the DNA of a Middle Eastern woman. This means that at some point in the 500 to 2000 year history of your maternal lineage, there was a Middle Eastern woman. 
Since there is no database of Middle Eastern lineages by tribe slash country, we cannot identify a specific group name. However, the specific definition of the group is called haplogroup M23. Please see the enclosed sheets for further explanation. Below, we list the data that we use in your analysis, la 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 la. Let's see. And then they just say that they encourage you to share it with people in your family. And it says, we understand that this information be surprising, especially if you were not aware of any Middle Eastern women on your mother's maternal line. Please understand that this does not mean that you are not from Africa, nor does it mean that you are not black. It simply means that the hundreds of branches on your family tree, that of the hundreds of branches on your family tree, this one is not African. So I thought that was really interesting. What do you guys think? <laughs> Am I a Middle Eastern woman? Results say, survey says... Yes. delicious dumplings steaming away yeah. and then we've got some of these Ooh. to eat on the side two of them one for each oh, love these sesame yeah. seeds to put on top some more green onion some sriracha I need to get some more and then some poison so I'm going to keep on cooking. I'm going to look at these, see how they're doing. And then everything should be done with the exception of maybe the dumplings. The dumplings might need like five more minutes because it has chicken in there and I want to make sure that that's fully cooked. So I'll check back in when our plates are put together. So I'm going to dig in, my boo's going to dig in, and we're going to call it a night. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for dinner. Yes. Because that's when we're going to be making that catfish stew. Okay, y'all. We're in the kitchen. Sorry if it's a little bit loud. My boo's on the phone, the TV's on, and it's all way over there. I'm about to watch Blood and Water. Please watch it. It's on Netflix. One of my favorite shows. I'm not really into the whole teen angst type shows. Um, so I had no idea that season three was out. We binge watched it. I can't remember if we were here, if we were in South Africa when we binge watched it. <sighs> I'm so excited. The recap is going on right now, but I'm so excited. But we're about to 
start dinner. So I'm gonna stop talking and just get into the meal. I'm just gonna do like a regular beef and cheese one for my boo primarily and then I'm gonna do like healthier version of spinach feta and maybe chicken in it or I might just do it plain as spinach and feta I'm not sure but I think I might put some chicken in there just to zhuzh it up a little bit but empanadas won't take very long I am gonna have to go out and get some salsa though for it so I'm gonna have to go out and get that so what I'm doing as I said earlier ground beef this is egg for the egg wash and then I'm gonna do feta spinach and then I have chicken that's like over <laughs> I have chicken that's like over here oh I'm watching Lydia chicken over here that's just like kind of defrosting because I forgot to take it out earlier today and then we have beans and rice salsa chips from one of our favorite kind of Mexican places in the area I'm going to get to cooking try to show more steps than what I'm showing right now than what I showed yesterday <laughs>
outside, but they are like, you know, crispy, crunchy. So I'm going to show you what we got going on and what our dinner's going to be. It's super, cr it's cr creamy. It's super carby, but it's all good. It's the middle of the week. Hello. It's fine. So here are our empanadas. Like I said, they're a little bit on the pale side. You can see it's got some brown, but I didn't want to cook them for too long just because I didn't want them to burn. And then we've got our beans and our rice and then our thing of salsa. This is like, this is like gold for us. And then we just have chips just in case you want some chips. For uh, something to drink, we're going to be drinking Angry Orchard because why not? I feel like this is the type of meal that would be really good with something bubbly. So we've got um, cans of Angry Orchard in the refrigerator that we're going to partake in. So then I'm going to call it a night.